Hi, and welcome to episode number 202 of the Savvy Social Podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping online entrepreneurs and passion-led business owners learn how to use social media as a tool to grow your business. I'm your host, Andrea Jones, and I'm fiercely committed to helping you understand both the how and the why of social media marketing so that you can create connection, build community, and make your difference in the world. This show is brought to you by Syndable, which is the all-in-one social media management tool that my agency uses to both schedule and analyze our clients' social media results. Check them out. Try them out for yourself today by going to onlinedrea.com slash syndable. And you can find that link in the show notes and all of the links we talk about today, which will be onlinedrea.com slash 202. So 202. I'm super excited for today's guest, Brittany Rincon, who is the founder of Hello Podcast Media, a podcast launch and management boutique agency that helps women entrepreneurs, especially women of color, use the power of audio to align their podcast to their content marketing and really streamline their podcast content creation process. Brittany, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I am very excited to be on the show today. Yeah, I'm super excited to talk to you about all things podcasting. I have a soft spot for all of my podcasters out there. Uh, But I really want to kind of get a sense of your background and your history. How did you get into the podcasting space? It's such an interesting story. So I had just finished grad school and the pandemic happened. And I was going for a walk with my son at the time, who was only a couple of months old. And I was listening to a lot of podcasts, right? It was like the only time we got out of the house, I was listening to so many shows and I decided that I wanted to start my own and I wanted to start a podcast for educators. I'm a teacher by trade. I got my doctorate in curriculum. So I wanted to talk to other educators and I started the Teacher Leader podcast and it just quickly blew up in in the way that I had so many people like, you know, we were excited to hear your story and your voice and your experience. And how did you launch a podcast? Like, what were the steps that you took? So I started helping people kind of in my circle and then people that were asking me online on social media, how did I do it? And that quickly turned into a course that I launched a couple of times. And then after I helped people launch their show, they were like, okay, so now what? (laughs) How do I get this going? How do I manage this? What do I do? Um, And that's how Hello Podcast Media was born. I started helping clients a few at a time and then helping them manage, edit, help them with their social media, their content strategy. And that's really how my business came to be. So it's just so funny how I started as a podcaster and now I'm really working more behind the scenes. Um, But I love the process. I love learning about podcasting and I love helping everyone feel like it's accessible and it's manageable for them because it's such an amazing platform. And I just feel like we form such amazing human connections when we hear people's voices versus just like looking at stagnant text in a blog. So it's just been a lot of fun for me to learn something new and just reach more people. Yeah, 100% agree. Podcasting totally changed my business personally. Um, you know, before podcasting came along, I was really struggling to be consistent with blogging. Just find, found like sitting down to write the blog post was just like pulling teeth for me. <laughs> I'm much more of a talker. Uh, just ask like my husband. <laughs> he was like, you've somehow made a job out of talking. Yes, yes, I have. Um, and it, it just really opened that up to me. And it just, it, there's so much intimacy in podcasting. You know, you're, you're with someone when they're throughout their day, like you said, walking with your child and like, you know, having that experience, like you're, you're with them when they are multitasking versus a blog, you kind of have to sit down and read it. And so I really, I personally enjoy that about podcasting. Um, so for the podcasters who are listening or maybe uh, business owners who have a podcast or even social media managers who run this for their clients, um, what are some of your best tips for using social media to kind of market that podcast, especially when it's first launching? Definitely. So you know, when I help even my clients launch their shows, we really look at the whole picture to make sure that the content that they're sharing in their podcast is the same content that they're using everywhere else. Because I've noticed that a lot of people do that separately. They will plan out all of their podcast episodes, and then they plan out their social media posts, and they 
kind of align, but they don't really align. So they'll go on their stories and they won't mention their podcast because they're also kind of like burned out from doing the podcast that they're too tired to kind of promote it and talk about it. So I definitely see that a lot. So one of the tips that I have is as you're planning out each episode and you're writing your script, let's say, also plan out how you're going to show up on social media to talk about that episode. And it could be through so many different ways. You know, I think we've seen a lot of stagnant posts like I have a new episode, go check it out. But that's really not cutting it the way it used to or posting an audiogram the way that it used to. Now you'll see people starting to get a little bit more creative and using clips of their audio in new ways. So even, again, as you're going through and writing out your script or recording and editing your show, pulling out that, those few things that you really want to highlight and maybe turning them into a reel or talking about them on your story or thinking about a way that you can get it out there. It, even though you're saying the same thing, just in a new way and getting super creative with it. I have one client who loves reels. It's her thing. She loves being on camera. So that that's a way that she's been able to repurpose her content, but also get her podcast out there because it is a newer show. She actually launched um, early, early 2022 and she's still kind of, you know, learning the ropes of it, but she knows that that's her area of expertise, right? She loves to do reels. That's the way she's going to market her show. Yes, I love that the planning of all of your marketing should be that holistic. Um, you know, the podcast isn't a separate entity. It's just one arm of your marketing. And so planning the social media alongside the podcast makes a lot of sense to me. I know even in our company, this is something that we need to work on with our podcast is, you know, create like really expanding the amount of content that lives in the show and being able to repurpose that in so many beautiful different ways across all the social media platforms. Um, so that's really, really great advice. Uh, what about, you know, how you approach social media for yourself? What are you seeing work well, you know, as someone who's more behind the scenes and has that service-based business? Yeah, that's a really great question. I think it's so funny. A lot of a lot of us like in the service based business, like we're great at doing it for our clients and not as great at for doing it for ourselves. It's just so different when you're looking at it, right? Like you need fresh eyes sometimes. And I've found that social media was never something that I was really like great at. I was definitely more of an observer and less of a of a doer. Like I I think I probably sent a DM on Instagram for the very first time, maybe like a year and a half ago. Like I didn't even realize that was a feature. <laughs> so it's definitely turned into so much more than that. I have made friends, like amazing friends who I've met up in real life. You know, I've gone on vacation and we've connected through social media. And um, as I'm growing my business, you know, and I'm putting out my content, I've had people reach out to me and say, I would love to work with you. Like, let's talk. Like, what are some of the things that, you know, you can help me with my podcast? Like, I love what you're doing with your clients. Let's, you know, find a way to work together. So I have just found that when I look at social media from a social way to promote my business, it no longer seems as scary as it used to. And I'm a lot more open. And I would say probably stories is the way that I kind of dip to my toe into becoming more open on social media. And I go on there and I talk about my business and my life and I've got three boys. So the craziness in my house. And it's just nice for people to see that I'm a, I'm a human, I'm a real person. And, and we have all of these things in common. And, you know, I'm really using my business as a way to form connections with new people. And I, and I really love that. And I would say I, I kind of use social different social media platforms in different ways, just like everyone else does. I find myself being more myself on Instagram and sharing about my life. And then I see myself on Facebook, definitely more focused on growing my business and talking to clients and sharing things about podcasting very specifically. So having those buckets in my brain also makes it more manageable for me as a business owner. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say you spend more time on Instagram then? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned, you know, stories as a way to show up. Um, how what's your content plan for that? Do you kind of just share as you are inspired or do you outline certain topics for certain days? Um, and then how does that translate to, you know, what you're posting in the feed as well? Yeah. So I would say, you know, I think as time has gone on in my business, I've posted less to my feed and I've seen like older posts still do pretty well. 
And then what I'm showing up on my stories is really that personal connection. So my feed is not as personal. It's definitely more focused on my business, on different tips that I'm giving for podcasting or things that I'm launching or things like that. And then my stories are more of that like behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, I might show some softwares that I'm using or that I just got off a call with a client and, you know, we're working on her show that's coming out. Um, so it's definitely more, a little bit more organic, I would say. And then the way that I structure my stories is like, I really try to, when new things are happening, I left, I like to let my audience in on those things. So I recently hired someone and I was walking my audience through that. I am redesigning my website. I'm walking my audience through the new website. I just took some brand photos for the first time. So all of those things I try to incorporate. When I'm planning, I like to do, I like to do a couple of stories a week where it's really personal, like mom life. And then I like to do some stories that are business, like CEO life. And then just like normal, like even like household things. Like I just bought this plant. Like, what do you guys think about this? Like, does it go with the vibe in my house? <laughs> uh, because I'm really trying to make that personal connection when I'm putting, putting myself out there on stories. And then my posts, again, are just more business focused. Lots of tips, lots of tangible things or things that I'm launching or ways to work with me. And I found that works best for, for me and my personality because I also like to have a little bit of separation. I think I mentioned like I have platforms for different things and I have different tools for different things and it helps me plan and stay organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the focus on the personal as well, um, because as a service provider, you know, our clients like working with us because we're humans too, right? And especially, you know, something that they're regularly going to be working with us on for, you know, months and years at a time. Of course, they want to know the human behind, you know, the service that they're providing. So I love that you show up and show that in that way. Um, you mentioned as well, Facebook being a priority for you for business. I'm curious how your, your approach to Facebook is different from your approach to Instagram. That's a great question too. And I think even like a couple, you know, years ago, Facebook is a great way to get into different um, groups of people who have common interests, right? I think I, I still have, I'm still a member in some of the groups that I joined years and years ago before I started my business. And they were more centered around my personal life or the areas that I lived in or the college that I went to. And, and those, those were the Facebook mem groups that I was in. And as time has gone on, I've joined more businesses focused around my own business, focused around podcasting, women in podcasting, or women who have businesses or, you know, entrepreneurs in my area as well. Um, and just connecting with people that way. I found that to be where, really where I spend the most time. I think at this point, when I log into my Facebook account, I don't even see people's posts anymore. I only see posts that are in groups because that's really all that I go on Facebook for at this point. I may occasionally go into Marketplace and like buy like a toy that my son has to have that's sold out everywhere. But other than that, that's really how I use Facebook. And I've joined a lot of groups and I've met so many amazing people. And I've gotten a, little, a lot, I would say the majority of my clients that way as well. Yeah, good old Facebook group networking. I mean, it's still because people go there for such a specific topic. It's such a great way to connect with people. And even today, 2022, still a great way to show up as an expert and kind of build those connections that we need. Um, you know, as you're, as you're navigating through Facebook, um, do you have any, or even Instagram, do you have any metrics or markers of success? You know, how do you know that the time that you're spending on these platforms is worth it for you personally? Well, I definitely know that it's worth it because my, gr my business has grown through my social media through the content that I'm putting out there. Because when I ask my con my clients, you know, where did you hear about me? Where did you first see me? And, you know, they'll usually point to either a Facebook group or they'll point to my Instagram. Um, so I do know that that is really where people are coming from. If they said, because, you know, it was a referral only, then like maybe I would spend a little bit less time on those areas. And I think as my business continues to grow and it does become more referral based because I've gotten a couple people that way, then, you know, I will probably reevaluate things. So really for me as a service-based business, I'm looking at where are my clients coming from. And then I also, um, when it comes to, you know, Facebook particularly, I've also noticed that the time that I'm putting in 
is not overwhelming me in regards to how many pitches I'm putting out there or how many conversations I'm starting out there as opposed to how many people are then coming through the door, if that makes sense. Like my conversion there is definitely like, I want to say like money well spent, but it's really time well spent. And I also put caps on things <laughs> because, you know, we all have a problem sometimes. You, you know, you just start scrolling and, and reading. And then next thing you know, like it's dark outside and you're like, where did my day go? So I do have, um, <laughs> I do have settings on my phone that will alert me when I've spent too much time on certain apps so that I can, I can kind of like take a pause. You know, um, and I do also schedule it. So I do schedule in my calendar. I get a nice little alert. You know, now it's time to do some networking or hop onto stories so I don't forget because I need an alert or my day just gets away from me. I like having a couple of reminders. Um, but that's really where I'm looking at. I'm looking at my numbers there. Like, is my time well spent? Yes, because this month I was on Facebook, let's say for this week, I was on for five hours, let's say. And, you know, I talked to five people and I got a client, one client. And I'm like, that's great, right? So making sure that I'm tracking that. And I do track my time in a couple different ways. I use Toggle to track my time and, and different projects yes. that I have going on in my business um, because I have so many moving parts. So it's like, if this is my time to network, is it being used appropriately? You know, are, are people still coming in consistently? And I will say, now that I'm in this phase of my business, I am starting to do a lot more like inbound marketing and really putting myself out there and being the face of my company and, you know, a little less behind the scenes and doing that outward marketing. Yes. Okay. Yes. I love the metrics conversation in that it's directly tied to what's working for your business. I think sometimes people look at some of the vanity metrics, you know, like numbers of followers and engagement, but you're really truly tracking, you know, the networking piece and the content piece and seeing how people found you, which is the most important part. I mean, it doesn't really matter how many followers you have unless your, your business is actually growing from it, which I love. But I also love this boundaries conversation. I was like nodding my head along with you with toggle and setting a reminder. I mean, if it's not in my calendar or in my Asana, it's never going to happen. So I, I yes. too do the same things and, you know, set those boundaries as a business owner because TikTok has a hold on my attention. And if I do not set that boundary, I will be scrolling for far, far too long. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just created a TikTok account. I think I have one or two on there because I almost still can't figure it out. And every time I open up my phone and I open the app, like all I hear is music and sound and it's a little overstimulating for me. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I think I think I need like someone to walk me through this. I'm not ready for it. <laughs> oh, I had the exact same um, reaction when I opened TikTok. I remember because it was March 2020 when, you know, we all shut down for pandemic life. And I opened the app because I kept hearing about it. And as a professional person, I was like, I need to learn this app. I like immediately closed it because something started playing right away. And I was like, oh, no, this is too much. And so it took me a while to kind of get a hang of it. Now I'm obsessed. Like, I will warn you, if you go down the TikTok route, one of the best algorithms out there right now. And um, it'll just kind of deliver up the content that you want to see. So it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it is great. Um, I mean, I, I have okay. a couple. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I have a couple of clients who are using TikTok. And it's been great for their business. You know, they are directing people in the right way. And then they're also able to reuse a lot of that content on Instagram as well. But even for their podcast and like showing the behind the scenes, you know, in a TikTok of like their setup or the guests that they're having on. And it's been great for them. I, I know, especially like in the space, right? I do need to kind of learn it a little bit more. But I, I'm like at this point where I'm at right now, it's like I think I need a little bit more time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Take your time, go through it. And as a little shout out to like the Savvy Social School, we do have a TikTok course. So if anyone else listening to this is like, man, I've been wanting to try it and I'm not sure where to start. We do have that course that walks you through um, all of the things. And we really approach it with the baby steps in mind um, because we don't want anyone to feel like they should be farther along than they are. Because <laughs> that's how I felt when I first signed up for the app. So I don't want you to feel that way. Uh, so, you know, you mentioned TikTok. Are there any other trends or things that you're looking to try later this year? Yeah, definitely TikTok. And I think, too, I've seen 
I mean, people have always kind of like put their pod podcasts on YouTube, you know, in more of like a direct way. Like they've they've posted audio with like a stagnant image. Um, and I do think video is like is the way that it's going. I think that pre repurposing video on social media, especially if you're going to record your podcast episode, you know, recording a video component of it. And you don't have to even post the whole thing, but just using snippets of it um, so people can see, you know, who you are and your face. And it's so funny because I think a lot of people go into podcasting because they can do it in their sweatpants and like, you know, and not really have to look camera ready all the time. And, you know, I wouldn't say for every single episode, that's what you have to do. But for a few, maybe just so you have snippets that you can share, because like I said earlier, you know, the way that audiograms were going for for a lot of people, you know, a lot of people aren't really listening when they're scrolling. Every Their phones are on mute. That's why TikTok scared me so much in the beginning. But their phones are on mute. <laughs> they're not really watching the video. And, you know, it's really important to have those captions on. And then again, if you are recording some of your podcast episodes, they can see your face, they can see the captions, and they can get the gist of what you're trying to say. And, you know, that's really a, a big trend that I see on the rise. I mean, YouTube obviously has been around forever. But just again, like you can do that, you can publish podcast episodes on YouTube, but also thinking about how could you repurpose it for social media. Um, I think that's definitely something that I have my eye on, you know, in 2022, you know, as a business owner, something that I, I want to definitely dip my toe into this year to grow my business. And I love being behind the scenes and helping, you know, other entrepreneurs think about their podcasts in new, in new ways for them. Yeah, absolutely. I love that power of video, um, having the captions on. I have a funny feeling, too, a lot of the platforms will start combing the captions for keywords and things to help people find your videos. And so, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I'm excited for what you're going to do with your business as well. Um, okay, so you have a freebie for our listeners all about private podcasting. Tell us about this. Yes. So I love private podcasts. So a private podcast is just a podcast that's not live on any platform. So not on Apple or Spotify. You just can't search it. The only way to listen to it is to subscribe or is to, you know, get on someone's email list or have them email it to you directly. And there's just so many ways that people now are using private feeds. And it's something that I started doing a lot with my clients. So not only do I help them launch public podcast, but I help them launch private podcast to use as part of their sales funnel or even for their current members if they have a course or membership and thinking about audio in a new way. So I have an actual private podcast that talks all about private podcasts and I walk you through all the different ways you can incorporate it into your business. I know it's very meta that way. <laughs> How to incorporate it into your business. My favorite platform, I talk about Hello Audio as well, which is amazing for setting this up, super user friendly. And then I also talk about ways to think about the strategy behind it, like turning a, a lead magnet into a private podcast, like ways to make that work. Because I honestly, like I am a big fan of audio. I think audio is a great way of getting all of those people who need that multitasking assistance, right? To If they're on the go, they can listen to your content without having to sit and read through a leak magnet or work through a worksheet, you know, thinking about it in a new way. So that uh, that freebie is awesome. It's about, it's a three, um, a three episode series and it walks you through all those steps. Oh, beautiful. Definitely check that out. I'm a huge fan of private podcasts. We used it in our last launch for our mentorship program. We use it inside of the Savvy Social School um, everywhere we can because it's such a great way to deliver information as we talked about like on the go. So definitely check out that freebie. It will be in the show notes, onlinedrea.com slash 202. You can just click it and access that today. Thank you so much, Brittany. This was great. Where else can people find you? Yes. So the best place to find me is on Instagram. I am at Brit Rincon, Brit with two T's. And also my website, you can check out hellopodcastmedia.com and learn about all of the services that I offer and help with public and private podcasting. Wonderful. And I'll put all those links in the show note. Thank you again, Brittany. This was so great. Thank you so much for having me. 
And thank you, dear listener, for tuning in to another episode of the Savvy Social Podcast. You can check us out on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Leave us a five-star review if you loved this episode. It helps keep us in the top 100 in marketing podcasts on Apple Podcasts. And that's because of your support. So definitely keep up keep listening, share it with a friend, all of the things. We appreciate you so much. Next week, I have another episode coming your way. I'm going to have Taylor McMaster on the show. Uh, I signed up for her client account manager program, totally changed how we run our agency side of the business. So if you're a social media manager and agency, definitely want to tune into this episode next week. I'll see you then. Bye for now.